The 20th century has included a wave of suppression not seen since the days of Galileo. This loss has plagued the human race for almost 100 years and continues even to this day. For many of the marvels of today have their roots, indeed their primary patents, traceable to one remarkable individual, Nikola Tesla. Tesla's inventions are monumental. During his lifetime, dating from 1856 to 1943, he registered over 700 patents worldwide. These include the radio, the alternating current motor, bladeless turbines, and pumps utilizing high frequency and high voltage circuitry. Tesla also developed many of the founding technologies used in the logic circuits of today's computers, robotics, aeronautics, electrotherapeutics, and other areas of technology with which we are all familiar in our daily lives. In the small village of Smiljan, Croatia, then Austria-Hungary, Nikola Tesla was born exactly at the stroke of midnight between July 9th and 10th, 1856 the beginnings of a man who always seemed out of time with the world around him. From early childhood, it was apparent that Nikola possessed an extraordinary mind. His father, Milutin Tesla, was a minister who trained Nikola to strengthen his memory and reasoning skills through a variety of regular mental exercises. But Nikola gave the highest credit for his talents to his mother's side of the family, whom he referred to as having a long line of inventors. He suffered a peculiar affliction in which blinding flashes of light would appear before his eyes, often accompanied by hallucinations. Much of the time the visions were linked to a word or idea he might come across. Just by having the name of an item, he would involuntarily envision it in realistic detail. The flashes and images caused Tesla great discomfort, and by the time he reached his teens, he had taught himself to repress them from occurring, except in certain times of stress. Shortly after his graduation from high school, Tesla suffered a devastating bout with cholera and nearly died. He was bedridden for nine months, and doctors announced that he would not live much longer. During his illness, Tesla would occupy his still active mind by reading as much as his body would permit when he encountered a strange new kind of literature. Innocence Abroad by Mark Twain. Years later in the United States, Tesla met Samuel Clemens and was able to thank him for having saved his life. Clemens went on to become one of Tesla's few close friends. Tesla asserted that it was not until he reached adulthood that he discovered he was an inventor. Training for an engineering career, he attended the Technical University at Graz, Austria, and the University of Prague. At Graz, he first saw the Gramma Dynamo, which operated as a generator, and when reversed, became an electric motor, and he conceived a way to use alternating current to advantage. Later, at Budapest, he visualized the principle of the rotating magnetic field and developed plans for an induction motor that would become his first step toward the successful utilization of alternating current. In 1882, Tesla went to work in Paris for the Continental Edison Company, and while on assignment to Strasbourg in 1883, he constructed his first induction motor. Tesla sailed for America in 1884, arriving in New York with four cents in his pocket, a few of his own poems, and calculations for a flying machine. He first found employment with Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison wanted to build small, incredibly polluting power plants across the world, which would only be capable of transmitting power for two and one-half miles. 
Tesla had a more comprehensive vision, which was based on his AC or alternative current motors and generator combination, and figured out a way to transmit power over almost unlimited distances. The two inventors, however, were far apart in background and methods, and their separation was inevitable. Tesla's disease for putting ideas down on paper, coupled with his tendency to get bored with the completed invention and move on to the next challenge, led Tesla to toss aside a large number of creations that he never even bothered to patent. Once, when exhaustion left Tesla in a state of temporary amnesia, his assistant filed for patents on many of the unregistered inventions on Tesla's behalf, and had the master sign the papers while still incapacitated. Tesla's shunning of documentation was of some benefit when a fire destroyed the lab in 1895. The loss was a setback, but not a catastrophic one, since the most valuable of the laboratory's assets remained intact in Tesla's brain. In 1891, Tesla developed the invention by which his name is most commonly known today, the Tesla coil. Simple enough for today's hobbyists and science fair entrants to construct in fully functional homemade models, it was nonetheless a remarkable innovation, which remains the basis for radios, televisions, and other modern means of wireless communication. Tesla became known for the lectures at which he demonstrated his inventions and concepts with a theatrical flair. Many attendees were laymen who had little comprehension of what Tesla said, but were mesmerized by the bolts of lightning that leapt from his ominously humming coils and the unwired light bulbs that lit at the touch of Tesla's hand. These spectacular displays led Tesla to be popularly regarded as some sort of magician, a title that was bestowed not in ridicule, but in awe. The wireless transmission of energy would become the ultimate pursuit of Tesla's career he discovered that a vacuum tube held in proximity to a Tesla coil would burst into illumination without wires, without even a filament inside the glowing tube. Electrical resonance was the key to this discovery. By determining the frequency of the needed electrical current, Tesla was able to turn a series of different lights on and off selectively from yards away. He had just become an American citizen in 1891, and this new technology was to be his gift of thanks to his adoptive country, a means of transmitting energy instantly across any distance through thin air. Free energy for everyone. One of Tesla's assistants reportedly questioned the implications of putting such an energy distribution plan into practice. He wondered what incentive there would be for the electrical power establishment to begin giving away its goods for free, and whether Tesla could possibly be allowed to introduce such an arrangement. The presence of such doubts enraged Tesla, who was convinced, somewhat naively, that his plan would be accepted simply because it was the right thing to do. As the years passed, Tesla's vision of wireless energy grew even grander in scope. He solved one of the problems implicit in his first theory, which was that transmission of power through air over long distances would result in a significant loss of energy. Rather than using air as a medium, he decided to send energy through the ground. This makes little sense in conventional electrical terms, whereby the Earth's surface is regarded as, literally, the ground. But Tesla found that if it were charged highly enough, the ground could become the conductor itself. In this way, the entire planet could be transformed into a colossal electric transmitter. In 1899, as logistics prevented him from conducting the necessary experiments within the confines of New York City, Tesla headed west. A Colorado attorney named Leonard Curtis who had previously defended Tesla in court, offered to help Tesla set up a testing facility in Colorado Springs. 
Curtis was also an officer of the local power company and provided electricity to Tesla at no cost. Tesla and his assistants built a one-of-a-kind laboratory on the outskirts of town, which looked like a large barn topped by a 180-foot metal tower. This was Tesla's magnifying transformer, which he called the greatest of his inventions. The townspeople of Colorado Springs were naturally curious about what this great inventor was up to and respected the signs around the perimeter of the compound, which read, Keep out! Great danger! Still, they soon felt the effects of Tesla's apparatus. Sparks leapt from the ground as people walked the streets, singeing their feet through their shoes. The grass around the Tesla building glowed with a faint blue light. Metal objects held near fire hydrants would draw from several inches away. Switched off light bulbs within 100 feet of the tower spontaneously lit. These were the side effects of adjusting the magnifying transformer into perfect resonance with the earth. Once it was properly calibrated, Tesla was ready to symphony, using the entire planet as his orchestra. Late one night, in the fall of 1899, Tesla fired up his machine at producing a phenomenon he called resonant rise. Upon returning, the current was greatly weakened, but Tesla was sending out a series of pulses which reinforced one another, resulting in a tremendous cumulative effect. At ground zero, where Tesla and his assistant stood bedazzled, the resonant rise manifested itself in an unearthly display of lightning that still stands as the most powerful man-made electrical surge in history. The returning current formed an arc of lightning that stretched skyward from Tesla's tower and progressively grew to an incredible 130 feet long. Apocalyptic crashes of thunder were heard 22 miles away. Tesla had been concerned that there might be an upper limit to generating resonant surges, but now he believed the potential was limitless. The demonstration did come to an unexpected halt, but that was because the power surge caused the overloaded Colorado Springs power generator to burst into flames. Tesla received no further free power from the plant's furious owners. He returned to New York in search of backing for the global implementation of a resonant energy system. Now cognizant of the business world's inevitable reluctance to support giving away free energy, Tesla pitched his new project as a means of transmitting communication rather than electrical power. Decades before the birth of the Internet, Tesla was envisioning an information superhighway that was a far more sophisticated communications network than the one we use today. George Westinghouse passed on the idea. Tesla next proposed it to J.P. Morgan, the wealthiest man in America, who had previously declined to finance the inventor. The idea of a monopoly on world communications intrigued Morgan and he enabled Tesla to build a new laboratory on Long Island.